Thank you very much for everyone attending. Welcome. <coughs> Can I just remind you that we do have filming taking place. This meeting is being webcast. And can I also give folks a reminder about their microphones, please? Uh, they are switched on and left on. They actually affect the way the other microphones work. So, thanks very much for that. And the final one, please. If you have your mobile phones with you, can you please ensure they're on silent or switch off the duration? Thank you very much. by inviting members to declare any interest or anyone subject to weapon arrangements. Thank you. Clearly no, no weapon arrangements, Chair, but there is mention of one of the forces uh, with the Jet set. It's in passing, so I'm going to declare uh, personal interest and not the weapon meeting. I hope it's uh, that detail of the interest. Uh, that would be that kind of Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Steve. Andrew? Uh, prejudicial interest in item 4, the Bells of Kingdom. Thank you. Any more declarations of interest? Okay, we move on to item 2. The minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of September and the accuracy of those minutes. Everybody happy with those minutes? Yeah. And can I, Chair, just add, thank the officers for sending out the written reports associated with all the available reports, which is very helpful to members. <coughs> Councillor Lee, yeah. um, you Sorry, Chair, yeah. just in, in the minutes, it's uh, from the declarations of interest of the last meeting. It said that I'm actually a member of Prima, uh, sorry, of uh, Magenta. Living board and it should be pre group. Okay, we'll make an alteration in the minutes. Thank you for that. With that one alteration, everyone's happy, yeah? Thank you. Item three would be the financial monitoring report, but I've had a request for the modern slavery scrutiny report to be moved up the agenda because uh, Chris has to leave early tonight. So with everyone's agreement, I take item seven as item three. Everyone happy with that? Okay, thank you. Chris, would you like to come to your report, please? Thank you, Chair. It's nice to be back in this uh, screen. Thank you. Uh, okay. The recent government modern slavery strategy, uh, in particular, focused on the law enforcement response. Uh, and although the roles of local authorities is, is safeguarding children's care for children and attacking child sexual exploitation, particularly in reference, in order to take this review, members of the new power identified a number of other areas that are considered appropriate to enable Will Council to strengthen its responsibilities to deal with modern slavery. And with the immediate recognition of the requirements to develop a modern slavery strategy to review power of these, this should complement and strengthen the Will strategy moving forward. And at this point, I, I would just like to thank the panel of councillors uh, and the officers, and in particular uh, Officer Mark Campbell, who has done a great amount of work. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. Uh, it'd be remiss of this scrutiny group not to record our thanks to the members of the Task and Finish group, both elected members and officers, for the hard work that's gone into this report. Throw the, throw the floor over to questions then. Thank you. Just to uh, to second what you've said there about the, the, the panel and the hard work you've gone through. Uh, I think it does really show sometimes, you know, we have um, members talking about scrutiny and whether it's effective or not. 
Uh, I read this report and I thoroughly um, understood what was going on, and that's not always easy for someone as that as me. Um, uh, and it was quite clear, it, it, it reads well, it reads in uh, great language, and in a way the cabinet member will take the benefits of guests and applaud it when, it when it's launched. The, the question I, I wanted is, okay, we have the policy, and it, it looks fit for purpose, is there engagement with residents, ordinary residents, who have a, who have a part to play, and those particular groups who are in contact with people who may be vulnerable and subject to the issues in and around what I mean, I can think of people who have got an interest in it, and know it's not to miss, they have great interest in it, and I certainly know tomorrow's women, women change has been mentioned in, in, in discussion. So those organisations that are part of, of sort of the monitoring process, um, and I'm hoping through offices that by taking this up to cabinet, the launch and the continual review of it engages with these organisations. And I know Salvation Army are going to play a, a leading role, but there are many, many organisations around the board that, that have an input to make, so I'm hoping that will be part of the launch. And certainly, as I said, the review date is 12 months. Uh, I think it should be a, almost ongoing monitoring of how the policy gets in and, and, and moves forward, and maybe a formal report back in 12 months. But I hate the idea of someone simply saying 12 months, don't do anything for 12 months. So, certainly, um, I know there's training involved, and I encourage all the members of staff who were invited to train to go. But certainly, elected members, if there's a training session set up, I would encourage those to go. But, I have to take my hat off um, to, to all of those involved. It's been a, a tremendous piece of work and uh, thoroughly, thoroughly think it's, it's, it's good out there for Sweden to Thank you very much for that, Steve. Anyone else have any more comments? Alan? Thank you, Chair. Um, and uh, obviously, I endorse everything that has sort of already been said in, in, in thanking um, Councillor Carabier and the other councillors who have been involved in producing this report. Um, <coughs> my, my, my real concern is really how far are we assessing the, the, the real nature of the situation? Um, it's, it's probably one of those things where there's an awful lot going on below the surface which we're unaware of. Now hopefully by setting this monitoring process in, in train we'll be able to, to uh, unearth some more, or more practice that needs to be cut out. Uh, just looking at some of the figures, I see we, a couple of years ago there were three um, prosecutions, three offences, went up to 11 last year, and the first half of this year is up to 12. So it, it may be just by, by shining a light on, on, on some of these, these evil practices, um, more people are going to be uh, willing to come forward and, and, uh, uh, and then bring these people to justice who are you know, perpetrating these acts. So it, it's, it's great piece of work, but I think you know, we do need to be very conscious that there's probably an awful lot going on below the surface of which we're unaware. You want to, Christina? Um, thank you for that one. You're absolutely right. Which is why we feel um, that this isn't a, a task and finish group that can finish because it is evolving all the time. And we have we now got the statutory bit. We've got the thing in place. We've got the way of reviewing it. But. Um, we are still looking at the training for councillors and we would really have wanted this group of us, well there's only two or three, to continue, um, although Chris isn't on the committee, because that's exactly the sort of thing we want to explore. We've made contact with other groups. There are quite a few um, workshops and seminars going on as a field that we <coughs> want to go to. Um, and we were hoping that um, this committee would look favourably on that in its work programme. But obviously Chris isn't a member anymore, but we're that far down the line on this. And we've made quite a few contacts with us both coming from an ethnic background. The same ethnic background. We're yeah. We're yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great, thank you very much for that. Does anyone? Adam. Thanks, Chair. Just to add my support to the comments that have already been made, to thank the uh, members that have been involved and the officers for the hard work that's clearly gone into the report. And I think it's clear that something that needs to be kept a close eye on. If people have already built up contact, if there is a mechanism where we can 
know, not wait a year and see what happens, but keep a close eye on it. I think you know, that's the biggest one. Okay, thank you for that. Anyone? Any more questions, folks? I think, given the work that's gone into it, and given some of the comments around the table, particularly some of the concerns, I think it's beholden on us to ensure that this stays on our work program and we actually take a keen interest in monitoring the impacts and monitoring the action plan. So it would be my proposal to actually keep modern slavery on our work program to be reviewed on a regular basis. Would anyone have a comment you'd like to add to that? Thank you, Chair. That's exactly what I was uh, hoping to say, uh, and that's the direction we wanted to go in. It is not something that is a done and dusted deal. It's, as uh, just to be a say, what Council Bush Press has said, we've got the, the legislation down, and we've got a lot of things that we've got to connect together, and it's an ongoing thing that we need to look at. And as Councillor Graham says, it is like a duck gliding through the water with the feet on the knees that have not So we need to progress, and so I'm delighted you can take this as well. Very well, just, just in order to formalise the situation, can I have a show of hands at that regime? Sorry, Steve, sorry, Steve did propose that, didn't he? Yeah, did. Did, did we have a second for that? Alan, thank you. I wouldn't be so presumptuous to ensure that Chris is prepared to undertake the work and continue with it. So, Chris, what do you comment? Uh, yeah, absolutely, Chair. I'd be delighted to carry on. Cheers. Okay, thank you. We've got a proposer and a seconder. Yeah. Can I just have a show of hands, please, folks? And I think that's in it as well as the two recommendations that currently exist on the, uh, on the report as well. In addition to the issues, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it deserves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of the banks. So that's where it, where it is. The major variance 
is, is, is on the environment, so, uh, top line, uh, how's the plan in the leisure, and it was the same as the kind of forecasting to come under Russia at the moment. So, okay, and on that, as to what, why, perhaps some of the kind of, kind of the, uh, the reasons. Uh, environments, we've got another contract saying that haven't been achieved. This past two years we've gone to the, the, the sales of the contract, so we kind of want to sign down saving. We've made some sales there, but not the full amount. So we've got around about £45 And then in this current year, um, there was actually a, a sales option on green waste, which is great green waste, income by £300,000. I think so far what's been achieved is £100,000. So the income has gone up, but not by full amount. So there's a £2,000 shortfall. On, on, on that option. Okay. Um, housing planning, we've got a number of other spends, mainly due to sort of increased income and, and some kind of expertise in that area. And leisure, um, wood chip saving options come out and be cancelled, and, and there's also been delays on full pitch savings, but there's been some kind of mitigation during the year. Um, there's been some kind of VAT receipts that come back to us, which is sort of better than we expected, and that's helped out that area. So, say, in overall terms, roughly half a pound. Overspending the forecast at the moment. Okay, so that's, that's revenue. Okay, uh, just getting into, into, into capital. Um, and there's a full, this is a summary basically uh, of, 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 of what's in the report. Pens in the 15 16 that haven't got a full list, list of scheme. But just to summarise in the, the three areas there's a cap program, so nine, that might be £2 million. Spent rate so far was like £1.9 million. I have to say, as always, in terms of capital spend, it does kind of take time to come through. So you do get works taking place and then obviously the sort of the invoices provide later on. And then some of the schemes are also kind of back funded. So on some of the schemes it kind of work is taking place towards the back end of the year. Okay, on that. Okay, so but it is, yeah, uh, quite, quite a way to get to get to that good two million. Okay, so that's where that's up to. Okay. And then kind of just, just a final slide, really, which I think this was all last time, but uh, uh, just in terms of the Royal Committee, and perhaps some kind of key dates, really. Uh, the budget for, for, for 1920 is £45 million. Pounds. As you know, we're going to kind of have a role in review and challenging the kind of budget proposals. Uh, on the right hand side, there's a couple of say that cabinet proposals are going to be implemented on Monday, uh, and there's an environment over the environment over the street workshop on the 4th of December to go through some of those. Those options which you want to to look at as well. Okay, um, you can also make those suggestions in terms of savings, etc. Put those forward and make comments as well. Uh, and in terms of kind of the timetable, budget cabinet due to the date of the to kind of recommend the budget, and that would then go to kind of full council to be approved. And obviously, maybe all things of options put forward as well on the 4th of March, and that full <coughs> council will then set the, set the budget and council tax. And that's kind of the next few months worth of work. Presentation. As I say, the report is for some editing, so that they can map the and make headlines. Can I say any questions, Chair? Thank you, Peter. Before I ask if the members want to ask any questions, can I thank you for the up-to-date figures? We have, as a committee, regularly asked for <coughs> up-to-date figures as opposed to figures that are uh, historic, and we appreciate the work that's involved. <coughs> Presented those up to date figures. So I just wanted to actually thank everyone involved in the preparation of those figures for so ensuring that we get as much up to date information as we possibly can. Can I ask if any elected members have any questions? Tony? Okay, thanks, Chair. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to read it or not. Um, I'm just interested in the capital, um, the capital funding and that. I noticed all the sort of projects that the, uh, the funding is going to, uh, and that one, you know, obviously deserving ones. I'm just wondering how that capital funding is decided. Who decides what is appropriate for a particular place? And why I'm saying that is, not, and I brought this up at the last meeting, and I've noticed a bit more than going around to um, Woodchurch Leisure Centre and that. There's no capital funding at all for Woodchurch Leisure Centre, the capital funding this year. Absolutely zilch. And um, the building is almost falling apart. You know, it is in an awful position, really. So my question is, does this 
capital funding come before the scrutiny committee when it's decided by the executive, or who actually decides the priorities? Okay, thanks for that, Tony. Peter, can you answer that? Yeah, that's my nice question. And, and on the back of that particular uh, question, can we have a written response as well, please, before you answer it further? Thank you. Yes, okay, I'll take that in Chair, um, we have submits on the program every year, so there's kind of a bidding process now. That comes from the service to the services of the council. Um, so there's a bidding process that takes place around about November the same time. We ask services to put forward bids for the capital. So they can cross the council. Those bids then get assessed. And they put, I put a program and that goes to, goes to the cabinet. So cabinet then sees that capital program and that's kind of part of February budget papers. Um, the capital program is then redualted and then taken to the full council. <coughs> so it could be a member of the full council. Sorry, can I just come back on that? Um, thanks, uh, David. Sorry. Thank you. I mean, <coughs> so who, are, who in the department actually decides that? Is it people who have been going around the leisure centre, the various sort of areas and that, and then um, success, that's a priority? Or, you know, is it, I mean, is it high up in the department that the decision is made, or is it lower down? Is it the, People who are, I mean, people who are reporting at the leisure centres are saying, you know, we desperately need, you know, sort of something done here. I mean, is that taken into consideration? Peter, when, when, when we get a written reply, <coughs> can the answer to that particular question form part of the written reply, please? Chair, yes, it can. It can. I, if it, if it's not wrong, I think applicants are signed up by senior managers in, in departments. Uh, and then there's kind of there's a criteria that scrum, scrum criteria used as well. So for example, things like you know uh, investment to save, you know, does, does retain users, etc. Is it essential health and safety as well? Is, is, is a key factor as well. So there's a number of factors that that score the bids as well. So we try and score the bids in kind of a priority order. But I'll put that to it. Thanks, Peter. And just just one caveat on the written reply. If there is a criteria for judging the bids that we've alluded to, can we have sight of the criteria as well, please? I have a few more people who want a question. Steve, and then Alan, uh, and then Brian. It, it, it's, it's just a fo follow-up, Chair. If we're to do our job properly as a scrutiny committee, we need to understand the work in Steve uh, and how the capital programme is. It, it has, and maybe our fault if we haven't dug deep enough, but we tend to receive the capital programme once it's decided, and this wasn't objected to throughout its life uh, as it would appear. Um, but I think to do our job properly, we need to know those are, those are facts uh, and how the thought process is developed and the criteria, whether you know social value is, is, is still in the criteria, and then perhaps you know we can uh, suggest all the criteria that is in there. Um, and help the cabinet uh, through the senior officers make the right decisions so that every pound we invest is going in the right place uh, for all the right reasons. And I, I think that's incumbent on us to do that. And I think it's incumbent on the cabinet to, to respond to those sort of um, you know, pleas and um, recommendations. So I think this could be a start of a piece of work about how the capital programme is developed. If the thought process is happening now, we'll probably have an opportune time uh, to develop that and perhaps we could uh, have that information in time for an item on our on next agenda to sort of be, be at the, the foretales of the capital program rather than when it's been done. Okay, thanks very much, Steve. Alan. Thank you, Chair. Um, and again, thank you, Peter, for all, all, all the figures. Um, while we're talking about capital, I'll, I'll turn my questions around. Could you tell us what uh, the £250,000 refresh of the Williamson Art Gallery is? Um, that's all. I'll take that one and then come back to those. Thank you, Chair. Um, that project involves a number of pieces of work. Um, I think I believe it's in the slate of the roof blinds, which is accounted to protect the artworks. Um, Replacement of spotlighting and the controls, 
there's some changes to the heating control system and there's, there's installation of all heating loops, all the can range features of that scheme. Okay, so uh, there's a second scheme on loops as well, which is outside to the cars. Okay, and that's something with archiving and catalog cataloging the, the, the collections, which can meet to meet, meet these new standards and will be available to probably 24 hours a day you know, to, 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 to see. Yeah. Thank you. I, I wanted then to turn to a couple of things on, on revenue. Um, it seems we, we perhaps rather you know, casually dismiss a couple of savings that haven't been managed to uh, be achieved. Uh, I noticed we, we've got 0.4 million on budget saving relating to waste contract efficiencies that couldn't be found. I wonder if we could have a little explanation of you know, what those are saved as well and why we couldn't manage them. Uh, and then following on from that, we, we've got in, in the letter of recreation this decision to cancel the 0.2 million um, budget saving option on flexible ways of working at uh, Woodside Leisure, Leisure Centre. Um, I, I must have missed that. I hadn't realised we'd, we'd cancel that. But you know, why, why couldn't that be achieved? It looked like a good idea. So you're happy to take those questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll be messing. I think my head on a bit there. I think a while ago, it's probably been about a couple of years, we were hoping to make efficiency on a bit of contract, <coughs> and there was some kind of things to have some negotiations. Now, I believe we've saved about £130,000 of the target. The format hasn't been thought to be achieved. So I think probably going forward, that, that kind of budget in terms of saving has to be put back in. And the market might want to have a bit more of these. Just briefly, Chair, so uh, members will, many members will recall because we've discussed it a few times here. The background to this was uh, two years ago, uh, you remember that we had preliminary discussions with BIFA uh, around potential uh, efficiency savings, uh, so no effect on frontline services, but looking at the ways that it could become more efficient in their operation. Um, what then happened is that once we got into the uh, detailed uh, negotiations with BIFA um, and after a uh, float on the stock exchange, we then found that obviously those, that those level of savings uh, weren't achievable to that degree. Uh, Nikki Butterworth from the commercial management team have been working hard over the last year or so to deliver some savings as a contribution, but that full figure hasn't been achievable. Uh, and I think we understand now that's, uh, that's unlikely to be the case two years on. Okay, thanks, Mark. Before I go to Brian, Alan, we have uh, as agenda item five uh, a report that Mr. Elkington is going to speak to. So the second question that you've just asked may well be more appropriate aimed at Andrew as opposed to Peter. Andrew, you have to answer that question when the time comes. Uh, yes, yes, Chair. I mean, I, I, I can I can answer it now if that, if that would be helpful to members. Yes, if you don't mind. That's okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so, so you can all hear and see me. Um, so, the there was a proposal to limit the numbers of hours. Oh, sorry, there you go. Exactly what is the figure in the column because it's not very, it's not very clear the way it's printed. 
But also, is it possible to get a breakdown of the difference between the two items, the West Kirby one and the Guinea Gap one? And also, Chair, Guinea Gap, in my mind, seems to comprise of two buildings, <coughs> one with the gymnasium is, and the other one where the uh, swimming pool is. Which one are we talking about, or is it, is it both receptions, please? Thank you. Chair, so the figure is £180,000 in total. Oh, sorry. It's not uh, printed off very well, as in the pack. Uh, I'd have to come back to you on the breakdown. So 
we have that plan at that stage. It's fair to say that based on our regional marketing plan, which was designed to draw all these extra subscribers and bring in that, in that income, um, we've obviously struggled with that and actually the, the income has remained largely static, it's fair to say. So what we're doing at the moment, the commercial team working for Nicky Butterworth, they're now looking at a number of things to try and get this income and this marketing plan uh, back on track as we speak. So we're doing a number of things such as we're doing analysis around GIS mapping data and identifying the properties where we've got all the goals, etc. Uh, and trying to target people. We've got adverts going out in the real world, we're doing targeted social media, doing more work with garden centres. And then we are going back to, we know that we've had people who's, who've subscribed but then have dropped off and decided not to. Um, and we want to get behind the reasons for that. So we're looking at door-to-door uh, uh, -door surveys and actually speaking to those people and getting some information. Um, so we know that, uh, we think one of the factors might be that we've had a, a very, very dry, uh, you know, very, very dry summer, absence of rainfall, so things might have been very nice, etc. But in a more scientific way, we, we are trying to do some research and build up some intelligence and have a more targeted uh, approach to try and uh, get that income projection back where it needs to be. Come back on that, please, Joe. Yeah. It sounds from what Mark's described there that not only have we failed to gain these 4,000 new households of customers, we're spending an awful lot of money chasing them. So, how much are we spending to try and get 200,000? Because what you just explained to me is, is a lot of money that's being used. And why are you advertising Will Bloom when you've got a Will View? Why are you paying for that when you have a Will View? You've never sold reaches every household and every business in the border. And there's one to spare, and you can choose to advertise the world blue. How can you justify that? How can you justify spending money to chase money that isn't coming in? Through the chest. So we had a we had an original uh, comms and marketing budget around this. Uh, the, the figure was in those original slides, and I can't remember what the number was to hand. Uh, the one thing that I can say, though, one of the significant Cost or resources is actually around staffing time, and the people working on this are our permanent mainstream resources who are working on commercial service. So, just to give members some reassurance, to do this work, it's not like we're deploying uh, additional resources or staff to come in and do this. We're using the it's Andy McCartney and the team of people there who are already employed by the council who are, who are working on this as part of uh, as part of their existing day job. Jerry, 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 Because I don't think Mark has the answer. 
and so on. That's expenditures. So perhaps, Chris, if you, if you email and ask the same question uh, of the PR section that Mark's just, Mark's just alluded to. Well, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry for misunderstanding, Chair. I thought this was a scrutiny committee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really thought this was a scrutiny committee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the committee went down because it just popped up to email yeah. other people. We should, we should be sending that to Chair. That wasn't, it wasn't my intention to fob you off, Councillor Blakey. That, that was never my intention. Chair, yeah. 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 can I suggest that comes from the scrutiny committee then, please? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Just in the spirit of being out, I think. Uh, it's very reasonable under the circumstances. It, obviously, members are looking for more detail around the comms and the marketing plan in general to actually get this even back on track. I'll take an action away. You know, apologies, I haven't got the answers to hand. I'll take an action away to go back to the officers who are, who are leading and doing the work on that, and I'll, I'll ensure that an answer goes around to all members of the committee with the detail of exactly what, what's in that marketing plan and what we're doing. Thank you, Mark. Jerry? Thanks. Changing the subject, Jerry, but still on item 3, 5, 6. As much of its concern and interest in spending uh, 110,000 on the existing holiday depot. Now, you know I'm greatly opposed to the idea of the new old cost results. But why waste 110,000 now, it's not money, on a, a part of the golf system that we have at the moment, which is going to be knocked down and have added built on it? Why has that been put in the budget? Maybe, possibly, and maybe Mark can give me a secret answer here, maybe they decided to give up the open golf resort plan, we hope they have. But, but this is a total waste of 110,000 pounds. If we're going to in next year or so sweep away the oil and gold we ought to build it somewhere else. So what's why waste money? Continuing it if, 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 if 